My fault. The reason of the call is that Alston and other companies have recently dropped down the rates in the market. Let me ask you this. If we offer you something better, something cheaper than what you're paying right now, would you consider that as an option? Think do, about it, maybe? Do you offer blood insurance? Yes. You, you, you can cover my blood? If I, if I lose blood, how much is a pint worth? Hello? <laughs> what does it mean that you want out of being a wizard? Study, learn, and pawn magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, signature spell is very good. Converting formula and processes into effects. I understand the mechanics of magic. I think what we have here for wizard that's cool to distinguish it from sorcerer is the focus condition. If you're a wizard without a hat, what kind of wizard are you? And that's very true. Ultimate utility of spells. We have your signature spell that we can build some stuff around and that already has a pretty fun mechanic to it. Empowered casting kicks on at 5th. Can they beat Goku though? Probably not this wizard. <laughs> Wizards IMO are breadth and not depth with magic. Ooh, okay. So why not tall? If we're talking like civilization, you're thinking like they build a wide sieve rather than a tall sieve? God, if anything, it feels like they should be the magical secrets. Like, yeah. What if it was... Because you get one in a new spell, right? You get a new aptitude in a new spell each time you level up as a wizard. You don't understand Strider's point? Oh, oh okay. Um, It's like this. Uh, imagine that this is on a graph, okay? So wide versus tall is a thing that... Uh, I think it may... Did this actually start with uh, Settlers of Catan? Okay, cool. This might help. In Settlers of Catan... The way that this works is you are trying to build settlements, okay? So these, this right here means that a settlement was founded, all right? So there's a settlement here, there's a settlement here, and in order for you to found a new settlement, you have to, number one, you have to have the resources, but number two, you also have to have uh, at least two roads between another settlement, right? So like this one right here, I can found a, a settlement right here, but I couldn't right here. You see, because these are there would only be one road that I place in between these two. So I couldn't found one here, but if I had one of my own roads, like this guy does right here, boom, he can found a settlement right here. Okay. Now what this means, uh sorry, there's another thing that you can do with settlements after you have founded them, if you have the resources to, and it's you turn them into cities. Okay, so that's what these represent right here. Whenever you found a city, it means that you acquire double the resources any time that these numbers are rolled on 2d6. Whenever you found a settlement, you only get one of each resource. Uh, well, well, sorry. One of the resources if that number is rolled on the 2d6, right? So, the, the philosophy here of wide versus tall. If I'm looking at who I think has the widest settlement right now, it looks like the brown player is trying to set themselves up for a wide settlement. And they've developed this one right here. Brown is actually in position to try and get the longest road victory condition. Uh, so they could try to found a settlement. Let's see, they kept getting shut out. They could found a settlement right here. That Yeah, this brown player just kept getting dicked over and where they wanted to found a settlement. So brown's actually not in a great position. Uh, but they were trying attempting to found a wide settlement, it looked like, and go for longest road. Red... I don't know what this position is over here, but red is also very underdeveloped. Probably because they settled on this 12 forest right here. Not a great spot. And they settled two of their settlements on fucking... No, they settled three of their settlements on sheep. Yeah, not super great. Okay, so red player is also not in a great position. Um, I think that if you look at blue over here, so blue has a city, a city, a city, and a settlement. Blue is looking very fucking good right here. Uh, blue is developing tall. So what tall means is rather than spread out a bunch of different settlements, they've decided to develop on three of them. Okay, so this one's going to be accruing double the resources over here, double the resources over here, double the resources over here, and this one is unfortunately settled on a desert, so it's going to get this brick and forest right here. Um, someone who's settling wide is typically going for things like longest road like it looked like brown was trying to do here uh, in order to just mass settle the board and block out other players from settling around they're also going to be getting more resources but like just not as many at one single time like someone that builds tall 
So someone that's building tall is like our blue player right here, who all of their settlements are kind of tight and condensed, but they're building them up, right? So each individual, uh, each individual settlement is getting built up into a city. So brown player is trying to build wide, blue player is trying to build tall. Either of these is a, this is like a fundamental, like, this is like the quote unquote meta to understanding how Catan works. So uh, you're typically looking for like really good resource generating tiles. So like the ones that are marked with red, you see like this eight, this eight, this eight, there's a six over here. This, no, that's a nine, um, the six. If you're rolling 2d6, sixes and eights come up more frequently than the other numbers. And then if you roll a seven, it's the robber and this thing moves around the board. So if you're settling on these resources right here, that means that you're going to be getting a lot of that resource. So typically, like this guy wanted to go whole hog on sheep. So you see a six and an eight with two cities founded on it. Whoever moved this robber over here must have been the blue player. It must have been the blue player that moved this one over here because there's no damn reason why anybody else should be focusing on anybody on this board other than blue right now. Uh, yeah, generalization versus specialization. There you go. Yeah. Blue player right here is specializing in producing a lot of sheep. And if they have a harbor, they're able to convert those sheep into the other resources that they need in order to build like more and more settlements and everything. Actually, blue player is in line to actually win this game because all they'd have to do is find a settlement right here and brown can't compete. They would effectively eliminate a player by founding a settlement right here. Yeah, I, I love Catan, by the way. Like, this is one of my favorite games. Incredibly well put together game. Yeah, no, Blue's Blue's like 100% in the position to win this one. You always wonder why the role of wizard and sorcerer wasn't flipped. To me, it makes sense for wizards to mess with individual spells and for sorcerers to be the wellspring of spells. Yeah, uh, sorcerers should be able to manifest like mana a lot easier, which is why I gave them tap. And uh, wizard is like, ooh, actually, hold up. You just gave me an idea. Ooh. Boom. Boom. There we go. Sorcerers can spend their hit dice to regain mana. Natural scaling right there in the class. Increases to a d6 when you reach 5th level and to a d8 when you reach 10th level. Yeah, they're, they're squishy blaster. Boom. That is very good for Sorcerer. Um, yep, you can tap into your inner reserves to gain additional mana. You're going to be blowing through your hit dice. So, like, that's scary, but I think that this is the kind of thing that Sorcerer players would like. Using the hit dice again in this game, it is such an underutilized resource. Like, there's so much narrative expression that just no other TTRPG seems to have tapped into from what I've seen. And I'm like, cool, this is, yep. I, it's called hit dice because they're using the hit people very hard, yeah. So Sorcerer isn't getting a huge, huge litany of spells. That's Wizard's job. But Wizard is not getting the mana that Sorcerer is. Wizard's identity is you can, you can cast spells more effectively, or at least one particular spell. This is casting... Okay, this is tall. If we're using the Catan reference here, this does feel very tall. Is there a spell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of added one, but not really because spellbooks effectively don't really mean a whole lot of shit. And it's just kind of an... Uh, spellbook creates a lot of bad feels in a uh, TTRPG. Uh, it sounds very cool on paper, but it adds a lot of clunking clutter and frustration where DMs can eventually just be like, aha, we take that toy away from you. You don't have your... Yeah. That's why wizards have towers. <laughs> um, So this is a very wide feature right here. But you can only put it into certain effects. Ooh, I kind of like that. You're tall in your overall level of spell expression. But you're wide in your manner of how you get your mana. Yeah, you wake up in a prison cell and they took your book. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. um, whereas wizard, you are very wide in your spell progression, your, your what you know, and very tall in your... I kind of like this. You specialize in one thing. Oh no, I'm just gonna throw a number. I'm just, I just I don't really have a reason for why I'm putting this level down there right now. I'm just kind of putting a level there. Half the cost rounded up. Uh, so it already costs you half the mana cost in order to focus on it. Oh, oh, oh. that's fucking scary good. How okay? What what breaks this? That is a capstone. That that would be a fucking capstone. Maybe it should be a D twenty. And you can. Ooh, wait a minute. You know why that's actually? I prefer that. You know why I actually prefer that, Krieg? You know why that's actually really fucking good? To make it a D twenty instead. Close call. If we make it a D twenty, it's actually better than rolling it as a D twelve, because you can spend luck on it now. It more or less says that a wizard six spell has to use uh, has to use focus though. Not, I mean, not really. It eases up your mono load. Um, it actually does make you better at casting other stuff because you focus on this one and it's pretty easy. Yeah. Um, no, we can come up with a different capstone. Yep, you can spend mana to, to keep using ease of focus. Um. This could be something else. Like, we could rename it something. I don't know what yet, but it could be something else. Oh, buddy. I love that this feels like a super unique wizard right now. Ooh. Fourth level D20 is also one fifth if you don't have awful luck. Oh, yeah. That's fun. That's fun how we made that work. Really fits into the flavor of these really powerful wizards that create spells that last for centuries. Yeah. You know what's actually kind of good? Well, it's weird to swap your signature spell. For one hour, all spells are signature spells. You know, hold up. Being able to focus on two spells at once is pretty sick. Ooh, ooh, ooh shit. Oh, shit. Ooh. You can focus on two instances of your signature spell. God, the, the thing that I love, though, is that all of these features beat for beat. Nothing's making me feel like... Oh, that's kind of meh, but like, ooh. Wait, only pay the higher of the two might be a simpler way to rewrite it. You can focus on up to two spells at once and only pay the mana cost of the higher of the two. Yes, okay, that's what that needs to say. Because casting influences the mana. The spell doesn't influence the mana, it's the casting that does. And this, actually, wait. Here, boom, there we go. Higher of the two castings, yes. Uh, that, that doesn't sound right, yeah. The more expensive of the two, yeah. Yeah, that feels like you're really toying with a bunch of different shit on there. Unlimited power! Oh, wait. <laughs> wait, that is really good, though. Damn. Um, I honestly don't even know that we really need to put anything offensive in this wizard anymore. At this point, this, this is a very fucking scary wizard. Manifold. I don't know about Manifold. Um, I don't know about Manifold Mind. There's alliteration there, but... Manifold mind! Magical manifold! <laughs> what? I, I always think, like, wizards sound like fucking the monarch from Venture Brothers. Mm, manifold mind! <laughs> Excuse me, Dr. Venture. The monarch would have been a terrible wizard. <laughs> Fireball! <laughs> I'm not... I, I, he's got too much, like, growl in there too that like I, man doc hammer just fucking killed it with the monarch like if you watch venture brothers doc hammer's voiceover work in that is god tier wow doc oh wait okay doc hammer wasn't the monarch but i mean okay doc hammer was also dr girlfriend so like still god tier okay oh yeah, dr girlfriend was yeah <laughs> man i Everybody needs to fucking watch the Venture Brothers. It's just, it is a perfect show. Ugh. I, I probably, like... Yeah, I put Venture Brothers up above, like... I, I say in terms of quality, I think the Venture Brothers is up there with the likes of, like, Gravity Falls and Avatar. Honestly. 
I, I think that Venture Brothers is probably about as good as Avatar. God, and I know some people are gonna be like, that's heresy. No, it's it's that fucking good. Call the feature concentration. <laughs> Manifold concentration. Just do that to fuck with wizards. <laughs> Oh, that's so fucking funny. See, a lot of the weight needs to be carried by the subclasses. Greater mana mound. <laughs> I'm just going to do this for now. We might change that later, but like, it does sound very fucking super villain. Mind mounting manifolds. Why is M like the best letter for that? That that voice is just so, yeah. M is sort of nasal and it has a nasal voice. Yeah. Mm. What else is... What else is mana? Mana. Ma. Mm. 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 Ba. Ma. <laughs> Coupled convergence. Mm, Coupled convergence. So. The subclasses can do some heavy lifting here. And because of that, I'm tempted to put some of these 9th level subclasses for casters at 8th. Oh my god. God, imagine this on a 20th level necromancer in this system. Yep, this already got its discount. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. This wizard may not have to fucking focus on their goddamn undead military. If you blow the mana and you're just like, all right, oh, that's good. What's the difference with which and wizard? Uh, which will be the logic right or, or sorry, wow. <laughs> okay, which will be the logic dread caster? Wizard is the logic spell caster. Uh, which is going to be more outright like damage focused than druid? Yeah, kind of like, yeah, nature versus books, right? I don't want you to keep regaining mana on a focus spell. We gotta now that's a thing that we gotta think about when designing subclasses. Um you're gonna be able to focus, boom, over here. Alright, cool. What that means and how we have to keep that in check. This couldn't just be a thing of like, I'm going to spend one mana to make a thing that's going to like disintegrate shit all over the battlefield and regain all my mana. We wanna make sure that that's yeah. Are there going to be more features for the base wizard class? They need to be all defensive at that point. Um, and, and that's where I would say things like you can increase your resolve. The illusionist can instantly make giant focus spells at once over. Yeah. Yeah, the wizard player should feel like they're they're almost a spell tactician. Whereas the sorcerer is just like the spell like champion in a way. Quick action rules uh, to casting still apply, right? Yes. So you can main action cast, quick action cast, and quick action cast again. Yeah. It's expensive, but if you need it because, like, you need some safety. Oh. I, well, I like the, like, all the wizard stuff feeling like, yes, you are smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are signature spells again? Designate a spell you know as your signature spell. You make its cast skill test with favor. You can change your signature spell over the course of 12 hours as a downtime activity. Eventually, your signature spell gets... When you focus on your signature spell, roll a d20. If the result of the roll is equal to or lower than your wizard level, focusing on it costs you no mana. Notice that this all kind of builds into each other. You can focus on up to two spells at once and only pay the higher mana cost of the two castings. Arc Wizard. You treat all spells that you have master aptitude with as a signature spell. If ever there were a reason, to go whole hog wizard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and honestly, the fun thing right now is it's kind of set you up to where you can actually continue to play into 11th level and above by just allowing them like, hey, just take talents. Take talents every level and keep increasing the stuff as you would like. We already wrote 11th and above play because this is... Z and Arc Wizard is spicy. Oh, yeah, that little curve at the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> Arc Wizard. I just love the fucking, like, word wizard. This is just such a fun fucking word, right? Like, wizard. Yes! Yes!